Hi, everyone. This Wednesday night, AAW returns to Daly's Place in Jacksonville for the first time since going back on the road. The card on uh, Wednesday night is stacked for AEW Dynamite Homecoming, including the highly anticipated match between Cody Rhodes and Malachi Black. With us today to discuss AEW Dynamite Homecoming is Executive Vice President Cody Rhodes. So without further ado, we're going to turn the call over to Cody for some opening remarks, and then we'll open the lines for your questions. Cody? Hello. As always, it's great to be with you on these calls. It really has been quite a year, and, and being on the road for shows for the last month has been wonderful. Uh, we are really enlivened as a company to come back to Jacksonville for the homecoming edition of Dynamite. Before we jump into any of the questions, I just want to go ahead and preface. I know that there are many rumors and speculations floating around. I won't be commenting on any of that, so please. Don't waste your question by asking about rumors. Uh, with that said, I'm excited to get started. Let's uh, bring on the, the questions. Thank you all. Okay, so here, we're gonna do this uh, as we normally do. Thanks, Cody. I'm going to call on Louis Dangor from Gimme Sport, and I would like to have Stephanie Francone from Steel Chair ready to go next. Louis, you're up. Hi, Cody, how are you? I'm wonderful, I'm good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, obviously, Malachi Black's arrival in AEW was a lot sooner than people would have anticipated, uh, given his, I know he's spoken now about his uh, 30 days instead of his 90 days as it should have been. Uh, can you speak about you, I guess, finding out that he could come in earlier than I'm sure you guys would have anticipated as well? And then any potential plans that I guess had to be changed considering he was able to come in uh, sooner than anticipated? Well, from my understanding, no plans uh, have been changed. Whenever there's a free agent of that caliber, uh, male or female, uh, you, you have to you have to jump on it. And that's not an area um, where I was the one who contacted or facilitated it. Uh, this is the same guy who kicked me uh, square in the jaw on his very first night to make a statement. Uh, Tony Khan is responsible for uh, bringing in Tommy End or Malachi Black, whatever he'd like to uh, go by, but no plans uh, were changed. If anything, we were presented with something incredibly special. Uh, Dynamite is the heart and soul of, of the company and what we do, and being able to put these matches uh, on television, this is huge. Today I just watched Jason Isbell and various other celebrities, uh, Paul Walter Hauser, comment on who they think is going to win. That That's so special because this is about our weekly television show, and it is not the classic old school, let's save it for the pay-per-view, let's stretch it out when really we only do four pay-per-views a year. Again, TV is where our bread is buttered, and this is a massive, massive match for homecoming in addition to that it's a massive card so him not having the traditional 90 days but having 30 days really worked uh in our favor but again uh we'll all find out together everyone on this call and myself uh if uh if the magic is there and, and if the passion is there because as AEW fans can attest you can tell right away with uh, a free agent with someone new uh, coming in. It's it's all about the passion. Great question. Thanks, Louis. Uh, okay, Stephanie Francombe is going to be next, and following Stephanie will be Michael Shalek from SE Scoops. Steph, you're up. Hi, Cody. How are you today? I, uh, I feel like you're always the second question he's called, so and I've really gotten I've gotten used to it. And I love it. I'm I'm very good. I hope you are well. It's magic. <laughs> it's magic. It. I don't know. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for this. This call, once again, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, um, Malachi Black recently he mentioned the fact that Jake the Snake Roberts we, was also on the EW roster was a big influence uh, for him when it comes to promos and the promo work and also the the attitude. 
when you think about Jig, because you know it very, you know him very well. Um, you see a lot of Jig the Snake Roberts in this character that the Malka, Malkai Black is. Thank you. Well, that's a great question. I, I think every, gosh, I don't want to really say heel or babyface in this setting, but everyone who has that layer of uh, kind of um, mysteriousness to them, every wrestler, they they do have a little bit of Jake Roberts in them, and they're probably actively trying to have more because he was so good at translating a story and also presented himself so differently from the other wrestlers of his time um i'm i'm actually this is the first time i'm hearing it that there there's a connection there uh, with the two and i i'm glad to hear it because people like jake roberts luminaries like jake roberts and arn anderson and tully blanchard etc cetera, etc cetera, to have them backstage at all elite wrestling is like having the book right at your disposal on how to be successful in wrestling. And you'd be surprised at how many of us young yahoos argue back and forth on how we should do things when they're sitting right there. Guys who have made no hyperbole with the statement millions of dollars uh, and they're contributing now. Uh, Jim Ross is another example. And these, these luminaries, these legends jumped on board to come to a startup wrestling company that three years ago, nobody was fully thinking would become what it has become today as as we really settle into this this golden age of wrestling on television uh so that's that's good to hear that uh jake's uh jake is uh inspiring to talent still and he will continue to do so i'd personally like to thank jake because i teach a developmental class or i don't know if we can say developmental class but i teach a group of young wrestlers uh, often before uh, call time at television. And Jake has been there with me for every one of those classes. And if I'm being totally honest, he's a far better teacher and far more qualified uh, than I am. And he's been incredibly helpful uh, with young people, uh, people like Brock Anderson, people like Lee Johnson, who is wrestling Miro for the TNT championship. I'm rooting for Lee for the most coveted title in wrestling at Dynamite homecoming uh, tomorrow. So yeah, big uh, big shout out and props to Jake. Thanks, Cody, and thanks, Steph. Michael Shalek uh, from SE Scoops is next, and on the on deck circle is Stephanie Chase from Digital Spy or Digital Skybes. Excuse me. Uh, without further ado, let's go with Michael, and I'll get the name right here in a minute. Michael. Hey, Cody. I hope fatherhood is treating you well. Oh, thank you so much. It really is. Um, it's like all the things people tell you, but you don't believe. And then it's its own magical thing that I can't even describe. I, uh, I'm a very, you know, I'm a pro wrestler. So a lot of what I've done my whole life is very self-serving. The moment I saw her, I could care less about, <laughs> about me. Uh, and it became about what I can do for her. Um, and uh, that's a, uh, that's just so special. She's nine pounds and five ounces now, and she's growing and making squeaky noises and just is the most beautiful thing on earth. She looks exactly like her mother. That's great. I'm a new father myself, so I can relate. Uh, Yay. So, yeah, the, uh, the free agent market right now is booming. So granted, you can't sign everybody. Even with AEW's expanding programming schedule, there's only so many spots on the roster. There's only so much room on the budget. That said, there's certain performers out there where if you're available, it's almost like, how do you not get this person if they're out there? So my question, without speaking about anybody specifically, what is mm -hmm. AEW's current appetite for talent acquisition? And is there room to sign five more people? Or are we pretty much at capacity right now? Well, you know, that's a, that's a great question. I, I think I tell a, a lot of uh, my peers in wrestling and, and people who uh, use me as a sounding board and I use as a sounding board, I always tell them you, you can't wish away good talent, especially when you get in a groove as a talent yourself. Um, and it's not unlike the world that Tony comes from already, 
the world of uh, the NFL and uh, and football uh, in the UK, uh, if there's a free agent out there that can move the needle um, and and be something uh, significant for us, uh, I personally, I'm not saying this from the company perspective. Personally, I think you have to um, go after them. And does that change the landscape of the show and the roster? For sure. But that is one of the areas where it, as much as things can get personal, it is business. Uh, and no one is immune from that. Um, we're doing wonderful. We have added uh, Rampage uh, coming up on, on, on the schedule, of course, and I'm so excited about uh, I am getting ready to go into a, a season of the second season of Go Big Show. Uh, Roads to the Top will be attached to Dynamite. I mean, we're really... There's a lot of AEW programming. Uh, so room has opened up, but to your point, it's not incredibly that much more room. Um, you know, I don't know the specifics of five or six or seven or three or whatever. I, I, I don't know the number, but uh, if you're asking me, the executive vice president of the company, one of the executive vice presidents, I say uh, the more the merrier. And I also would say it's got to be, it's very fulfilling for me personally as a wrestler, and I hope the Bucks and Kenny feel this way as well, it's very fulfilling to know that three years ago, it, not a lot of people believed in the revolution. The fans believed in it and that's why it existed, but not a lot of people believed in it and they weren't comfortable perhaps with it. And we set this table and now new people can eat. And Tony, of course, is at the head of all of that, but that, to me, I have no bitterness in my heart over that. That makes me feel wonderful about a legacy in the professional wrestling industry. The table has been set. Uh, new talent can eat. Young talent can eat. Um, and that's, uh, that's great because I grew up with the wrestling business being the backbone of my family to be able to leave it better than I found it certainly uh, means a lot. A lot of room to grow, though. Um, a lot of room to grow. Great question. Thanks, Michael. Okay, Stephanie Chase from Digital Spy is next, and following Stephanie will be Chris Mueller from uh, uh, Bleacher Report. So, Steph, you're up. Hi, Cody. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to me very much. Thank you. Um, with AEW back on the road now, I was wondering, you know, we saw the show last week, you announced a show for Chicago that's only just a few weeks away. Um, how much has AEW got an idea of their live touring schedule for the rest of the year, all being well with the pandemic? And how close to, are we to a show in the UK, which people over here want so much, and shows in the West Coast as well and, and Canada? How much of that have you guys plotted out or at least as much as you can with what's going on? Well, domestically, uh, Raphael uh, and Chris, Chris Harrington, uh, the EVPs and, and Tony Khan, we do have a good uh, layout of where we'd like to go. We also had a lot of shows that would be makeup shows that have now been scheduled and locked in because of the global pandemic and everything that happened to all of us. Uh, so we've got a great calendar uh, strung out ahead of us uh, in terms of it's it's fairly uh, w well mapped out. I don't want to give a false number on, on that, but there's a full touring schedule uh, from East Coast to the West Coast. When it comes to the United Kingdom, I, I feel like I eat my words on this, but it wasn't my fault <laughs> that the global pandemic happened. But the United Kingdom is a massive part of of what we do it's massive they are some of the best wrestling fans on the planet i had always envisioned that that match with anthony agogo was meant to happen in the united kingdom i i just would revel in that uh that whole you know fun patriotic battle uh but that's gonna a lot of that is going to fall on what happens with the variant itself uh, with vaccinations and with health and safety, because we need the fans to be healthy and we need the crew to be healthy. We're able to make changes as we've seen um, in the past year, being a company that really led the way in how to do television during a pandemic. Um, so I can't say that it's for sure going to happen, 
but I can say if you run a wrestling company and you don't intend on going to the UK, then I don't think you really run a wrestling company. So we, uh, it's, it's in our minds. It's just not on a schedule just yet, but we owe it to the United Kingdom, our partners at ITB, and I hope it's something we can accomplish. Thanks, Stephanie and Cody. Okay, Chris Mueller, you're up next on from uh, Bleacher Report, and following Chris will be Jim Barcelone from the Miami Herald. Chris? Hey, Cody. So I wanted to get your opinion on last week's main event with Nick Gage. Uh, just what was your opinion of the match in general? And as an EVP, what's your overall opinion on deathmatch wrestling? And does it have a place in mainstream pro wrestling? Great question. Um, I think the match was as advertised. Uh, Chris Jericho or that night, the pain maker and Nick Gage were very clear about a death match and uh, what you were going to get. It went on in the second hour and it was indeed as advertised. I, uh, before AEW was a thing, had considered uh, doing a death match with Matt. Um, I feel like I'm going to butcher his last name, but Tremont. Uh, I had uh, really heavily considered it and I, I never uh, p pulled the trigger on that, but that, that was indeed a death match. And I think the answer to your question about does it have a place to in television, uh, well, we were the number one show on cable. Um, and that is a huge honor three weeks in a row. That's a huge honor and responsibility to our fan base during the Olympics. Uh, we're the number one show on cable. Um, so yes, I think it does have a place. I don't think it's something you will see often. Uh, that's just my opinion as asked for. I don't think it's something you'll see often. And I think it's important that you balance your show out with, Sure, there was this death match between the pain maker and Nick Gage, an unbelievable match. Uh, but also, there are wrestlers uh, on our, our roster who try to present a little bit more of a, a family aspect to what they do, a little bit more clean cut. There are wrestlers that are a little bit more geared towards children uh, in terms of building a younger fan base. And that's really what makes this wonderful buffet of, of, of wrestling. So, yeah, I do think there's a place for it. I don't think it's something you'll see often on our product, but there's definitely a place for it. And kudos to those guys for, for putting themselves through that and uh, having a great main event. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Jim Barcelone from the Miami Herald uh, is next. And uh, then after that, I'm going to take a question from the right end. So, Jim, go ahead. Thank you, Cody. Hey, you mentioned Rampage a little earlier, and I'm curious because AW Dark and AW Dark Elevation, two really good shows on AW YouTube, the presentation of those are different, and there are things that are different about those two shows. And I'm curious if there's anything you could tell us up front about Rampage that will separate itself from Dynamite and the presentation of it and just what we can expect from Rampage? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, with uh, Rampage, we're going to have a, a bunch of news, hopefully coming in the uh, the following week. Uh, but I can say just a, a few things that about the show itself. Uh, one, I think you'll see with the show that it's it's more centered around the fight itself, the match itself, uh, being that it's a one hour uh, program. I think you'll you'll see a little bit more fight forward focus. In addition to that, Mark Henry will be joining the booth on commentary, um, and I think that's a really fun perspective. Uh, I've known Mark for quite some time. I was just I'm very proud of this. I, I was able to start a community outreach uh, department at All Elite Wrestling, and Mark Henry was one of the first people uh, that I had to have on on that team he would have started his own department if he could um because of his contacts in this world his ambassador ship all around with various outlets as we go from market to market to do good i'm very proud uh, i know it's not exactly on the uh, crosshairs of your question but i'm very proud of the community outreach group thunder rose is incredibly helpful um we did wonderful stuff with salvation army tomorrow we've reached our goal for wounded warriors and many of them will be in attendance at homecoming um, hats off to the captain Sean Dean 
um, I wanted a, a bit more responsibility in the company and this department is an area where I'm really going to sink my teeth in uh, because I truly believe in however famous or however you want to put it that you are, your sphere of influence and your ability to positively affect the towns you go to is, is a wonderful, wonderful thing that you can do uh, for, for really no cost. Um, so I'm very excited about community outreach, and I'm excited about Rampage to hear Mark on commentary and to see a show that, to your point, having these different identities with Elevation, with Dark, with Dynamite, it will have its own. Um, I, I kind of want to break a spoiler, but I, you know what? I'm what the hell? Every now and then I get a little get in a little trouble. I I think so. Maybe it's not a spoiler. I think the canvas with the logo in the center, which is one of my favorite things ever. Uh, is returning for Rampage, I think. So y'all can all tweet me endlessly if I was wrong about that. But that, that's as much of a spoiler as I can give you on, on Rampage. More news coming this week. I'm very excited about it. Thanks, Jim. Um, okay, I'm gonna uh, take a question here from, uh, from our online submissions from Darren Paltowitz from The Hype Magazine. <clears throat> Cody, when Darren had the pleasure of speaking to you about three years ago, and he asked you about your original to-do list, and at the time you said that that to-do list was pretty much completed. So you created a second to-do list, and, and then that consisted of all-in happening and, that, and, that, and all-in being an absolute grand slam. So he's kind of interested in your to-do list. What else do you have? Uh, what, what else do you and AEW, have, after everything you've accomplished over the past year, few years, what else is left to do on your, on your to-do list? That is a that is a loaded question. Uh, you know, my goals in wrestling have uh, changed so much. You know, when I first got into wrestling, I just wanted to win the title that they had taken away from my dad in Madison Square Garden, and then time just zoomed forward, and the goals presented to me then were astronomical. You know, to be part of the elite with with Matt, Nick and Kenny and Hangman and then to have Chris Jericho and John Moxley and Tony actually provide the biggest burst of life in two decades for wrestling. Um gosh, I almost would feel foolish making new goals for wrestling cuz so much has been done uh with this team we have uh definitely been a team effort. So much has has been done you know, this is going to be a, maybe a sappy answer. Um, but uh, I think before, you know, it's all said and done, and I don't know when that is because between you and I, I'm, I'm pretty tired right now. Uh, I, I would like my daughter to know. Uh, sorry. I'd like my daughter to know that uh, I never gave up at an industry that really can chew you up and spit you out. Um, I never gave up. Um, I really wanted to move forward and the identity that was presented to me, um, I was going to outgrow that the plans that were presented to me didn't match my own plans. Um, and I, uh, I just hope that's something that she can know. I think that's my biggest goal is, uh, I had the best dad in the world and, uh, sorry, I just want to be that for her. Thanks, Cody. Amy Nemedy from Russell Joy, you're going to go next, and behind Amy will be Nick Hausman from Wrestling Inc. Amy? Wow, what a follow up. Congratulations uh, to the birth of your daughter and for the beautiful world that you want to show her. Um, I want to touch back to the community outreach program because you kind of took the question right out of my mouth. Um, so with AEW, community charity and giving back has been very crucial from the outset. And with the formation of AEW community, you now have the Safe Alliance Project, the Wounded Warrior Project. Can you talk a little bit about the formation of AEW community, how it came into place, and how you sort of choose the, the programs that you're going to be working with as you give back to communities on the road? Absolutely. Um... It was 
kind of all the stars were aligning at once on community outreach. Paul White, he's an ambassador to the Special Olympics. Paul White arrived. I have a, a relationship with him. Uh, Mark Henry, uh, all about community outreach. And at the time, I was banging on Tony Khan's door every week wanting to put this department together because one of the things I learned through my career is a woman named Sue Agenson, you guys might know her, um, was the power of, of the program and, and how you can change someone's life and so politics aside, place on the card aside, how you can have that positive outreach. Eddie Graham was also someone who really, it was first and foremost in his business. And Eddie Graham taught my dad and my dad taught me. Um, and what I wanted to do different was I, I wanted to get basically, you know, Thunder Rosa, uh, in the in the Texas area, and she has social work experience, and um, Captain Sean Dean, his military connections. I wanted to do things that other companies can't do, and I don't think still can do, with in-program activations. We saw one at Double or Nothing with Canines for Warriors, which Mega of uh, the Jags uh, helped me coordinate. Uh, I'm open to everything. That's why we put the email out there publicly. It's my way of trying to reel in as many uh, places to work with that do good, that truly do good. Um, the JAGS uh, Foundation has been incredibly helpful. We're busing in 600 children, uh, youth groups, to the homecoming show um, tomorrow, 600. Uh, and I hope that I can give one of them uh, my weight belt on my entrance. Uh, these in-program activations where we can actually see um, these folks uh, means a lot to me. Um, again, Sue Aitchinson was a real model for that. Uh, and I, I always appreciated because I did endless amounts of appearances throughout my career. Um, they were incredibly important for my education. So, yeah, it's I'm sorry. I'm almost speaking vaguely about it all. I'm very proud of it. But uh, I uh, I'm real excited that every town we go to, I can ask Lance Archer, you know, about Texas. Uh, I can ask John Moxley about Cincinnati and I can do that everywhere we go. And we can have that talent specifically involved. It was really amazing to me, the roster, after we took that photo in the ring, the amount of people said, I want to be part of this. Um, that's how you know you got a really good roster. Um, and again, like I wanted more responsibility. I wanted this group to happen, this group to happen. And Tony uh, blessed us with this group. Um, I, want, I want talent to be able to experience what I experienced and just know the power of wrestling. You know, it's it's... There's nothing like it. There really isn't anything like wrestling. And right now it's destination programming uh, all over the world again. So that's, uh, to me, I want to I wanna spread that all around. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Amy. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, thanks, Amy. Nick Hausman, you're next, and you're going to be followed by Connor Casey from Comic Book. Nick? Cody, can you hear me? I can Hello? hear you loud and okay, wonderful. Hi, Cody. Thank you so much for taking the time. No, thank you. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask about somebody that I haven't quite heard rumors about yet, but obviously it was really jarring. Um, what's your reaction when you see a Bray Wyatt is all of a sudden available on the market? And I mean, do you do you see a space for him at AEW? Uh, Bray Wyatt was before he was Bray Wyatt was my, my rookie um, at, uh, at that second season they did of uh, NXT and the Rotunda family and the Rhodes family, they, they certainly uh, go way, way back. Um, I can't comment on if I see a spot for him um, when it comes to us, but I can tell you an incredibly creative individual, an incredibly creative uh, man. And whenever I see someone like that um, lose their job or, or you know, m move into the next phase in their career, as someone who left WWE uh, on my own, and at the time that was super unheard of for to leave, um, I, I just always, I can't be everyone's uh, sounding board, but I really want to be. Uh, because, you know, I'll give you an example. I'll pivot away. I would have never thought that Matt Cardona was going to end up being this GCW uh, champion and getting pelted with trash. Um, but 
I should have thought he would be doing something. And that's kind of the circle back to Bray. I can't comment on if he fits in with us, but I can say if he has an ounce of passion for this, that guy can fit in anywhere uh, because he's a very special, special talent. So that's really all I could say there. Thanks, Nick. Connor Casey, you are up next, and I'm going to follow Connor with a write-in question from Russ Weekland from Hollywood Life. Connor? Oh, there we go. Hey, hey Cody, thanks for doing this today. Um, wanted to ask about the United Center. You guys sold out Rampage really quickly. Um, is that going to be a consistent location for you guys when it comes to Dynamite, Rampage, and the pay-per-views? Uh, or is All Out going to still consistently be held at the Now Arena going forward? That's a great question. I know for uh, Tony Khan, it was a childhood dream uh, to, to run the United Center uh, and to sell it out instantly. I think we can call it an instant sellout. Um, Gosh, which makes me, that's just wild to say out loud. Um, with that in mind, I don't really think it's about the United Center, Now Arena, or even Wintrust Arena that was such a loud and rambunctious crowd for Revolution. I think Chicago itself will always be a destination for all elite wrestling. Chicago is a really unique wrestling town, uh, and it's a wonderful city. People like to travel there. Uh, for me, uh, I I don't think I've ever worked in the United Center. I don't think I've ever wrestled in the United Center. I don't. I really don't. I I can't wait to see the vibe there because obviously my heart probably um, personally sits with the Now Arena because there's a plaque on the side of the building with my face on it from when we were able to do All In. Um, I just you can't go wrong. Um, wrestling in Chicago. So that will be the destination for AEW. Chicago is always going to be part of our footprint. And it's also really exciting to see young wrestlers. Um, we have such a young roster. Look at Top Flight. Look at those kids. Um, for them to be able to wrestle in a, in a city like that, um, on an event like that, um, really just it's eye-opening and educational as, as a wrestler. So I don't have a favorite building, my friend. I'm excited about the United Center. Um, and the fact that we could fill it instantly, that uh, really emboldens our fans. Um, really, it, it begets the question, uh, what's next? Where, where is next? Thanks both. Okay, here's my uh, 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 a write-in question from Russ Weekland from Hollywood Life. And then following Russ will be Izzy from the Hot Tag with Izzy. First from Russ. It appears that so many great things are happening in AEW, the people coming in, the amazing matches, great new shows. But is, is there anything that you think needs improvement or needs to be finessed in any way as the months and years continue for AEW's continued success? Uh, it, I'm sorry, it's the question, uh, does anything need improvement? Yeah, is there any, anything that you can finesse or anything you can improve that will guarantee success uh, down the line for AW. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't know if we get uh, the guaranteed success, but I can tell you that one of my favorite um, jobs I have at All Elite Wrestling is every now and then I will coach one to two matches a night. And when I'm the coach, often I, I let, I have an incredibly long or non-existent leash when it comes to my matches because I like to retroactively uh, give the notes on, hey, did you hear this? This could have been a good opportunity for that. Hey, uh, I would try this next time. Uh, the one thing I do give my talents when I'm coaching a match is what's your goal? Is your goal to find the floor cams and make good facials? Is your goal to sell? Uh, is your goal to see this thing that you want to kind of what's old is new and take it and present it in a new way, a new move, whatever it may be? Um, so in terms of improvement, we're always, I'm always hoping that the talent that I have that night are wanting to improve. And so are all the other coaches. Jerry Lynn is a prime example of you could go out there and tear the roof down. Uh, and he, as soon as you come back, he's going to tell you, Hey, you forgot to sell your leg. 
and just just <laughs> humble you uh, right away. Jerry Lynn, really wonderful coach. Uh, my my brother Dustin, who I, I don't put over near enough, uh, coaches the uh, the women every week. Uh, he has them in the ring far before call time, sweating and just running and gunning and getting reps in. Um, so yeah, when we are, since we don't have a live event schedule, since it's TV to TV, um, it's very important that all the coaches have that mindset of improvement. Um, Tony already has that mindset of how can I improve upon the show last week? And he has great sounding boards. He has the Bucks. He has Kenny. He has myself. Uh, he has Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone. Uh, people in post-production, can we improve the production? Kevin Sullivan doing a wonderful job. Uh, so yes, uh, there is lots of things that we can improve and have to improve as we continue to to move forward. We want to grow. I mean, we we want to grow. It's not, there's no plans to not grow as a company. Um, I can't pinpoint one thing. Uh, I know with the Nightmare Factory, which is my school, in you know here in georgia the biggest thing we try to get across and improve our promos uh it seems like in this day and age everyone is incredibly athletic and can do every spot under the sun but if you can get people to listen to you if you can get people to love you or love to hate you if you can truly connect with them you know i it should be called connection class if you can find that connection where they are talking about you uh, that's that's the gold standard. That's like being an emotionally available actor in Hollywood. That's it to have that to have that promo. So that's an area. If I had to focus on anything with improvement, it would be performing in front of a crowd and having them involved in what you do. Because wrestling is very much they have to be involved. You can't have a match where they're not involved. And promos. Thanks, Cody. Okay. Izzy from the Hot Tag with Izzy is next, and following Izzy will be Brian Joyce from Wrestle Talk. Izzy. Hey Cody, what's up? How are you? I am. I am good. I I see you've been training lately, um, which it means it means you've got the bug, and that uh, yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to shake it. So make sure you train mm -hmm. safely. Don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything you've never tried before. Just keep keep at it. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful business uh, to uh, grow up in. So, could, hey, best of luck. You're always welcome to come to the school too, uh, if you if you if you want to. I don't know. It's kind of weird for us to have this conversation on the call. But, anyways, what's your question? <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you so much. You know, whenever you guys have an available time, I would love to come up to the Nightmare Factory. It would be an absolute honor. But my question to you is, your match against Malachi Black is literally the classic good versus evil, a lot like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. In these type of stories, the bad guy is always trying to bring the good guy to the bad side. So how do you maintain who you are personally as that hero of AEW and as a competitor in the ring and not tap into the dark side that Malachi Black is trying to bring you into? Oof, those were very lofty, good versus um, evil comparisons. I'm probably going to take the question a little bit different way um, than, than you think, but I, uh, I hear how the crowds currently are reacting. Um, I'm not going to go against that wave in terms of being excited about someone being able to run free in a, a Mustang with no saddle like a Malachi Black. I encourage that uh, for fans. But uh, I won't um, sacrifice who I am um, as, as a wrestler. Um, uh, I'm not going to do some knee-jerk um, heel turn um there's not a heel bone left in my body <laughs> there's there's not i did it for 10 years guys um and it, it's just i like hearing believe it or not even when it's against me it, it's unique to hear someone receive be received so well uh, i i felt very similarly when brody um had debuted uh, in terms of the reactions he was getting and that excitement and that that energy um when it comes to this match, oh, this thing is just so up in the air. 
um, for 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 what it could be, and, and it's a massive match um, f- uh, for Dynamite, and just a massive match for for the company. I really am looking forward to it. I love the fans um, from all over the world, of course, but I love the fans in Jacksonville. I have no disrespect to Daly's Place, the uh, gas station. I feel like we should name that place the AEW Amphitheater because it's really been home um, to us. So I- I'm looking forward to to what happens and how it sounds um, and how it feels. Um, again, I always like to be incredibly self-aware, so... It's it's important. Tomorrow's uh, I don't know if you guys can tell on this call. <laughs> tomorrow's a really big day um, for the company and for me. And um, I just I, honestly I'm looking forward to the the match. You mentioned Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, and there's a lot of fans who thought Luke was a, a whiny farm boy and thought Darth Vader was the coolest thing on earth. Uh, I'm a Luke guy. Uh, hopefully there's some Luke guys in the crowd, and I'm sure there'll be some Darth Vader people in the crowd. Uh, that's great. Um, you, you pay your money to sit in the seats. You can do whatever you, you ever you want to do. Um, and I've had some really wonderful advice from an extremely polarizing baby face in our industry that, uh, has kind of helped me through this current time. And, and without divulging too much of that, one of the best things was I have to stay true to who I am. I really do. And, uh, that I look forward to doing. Thanks, Izzy. Next is Brian Joyce from Russell Talk, and Brian will be followed by Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful. Brian? Brian? Okay, we seem to be having an issue with Brian's um, well, audio. Can we try? Can we try Sean Ross uh, Sap from Fightful, and maybe we'll try Brian next. Is that doable? Yep. Hey, Sean, Cody. you're on. Hey, Cody. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, you guys have had such massive success in the Chicago market as well as others, and when you see these sellouts over the course of a few minutes that has to lead you all to think that you could probably sell out 30, 40,000 seat venues. Has there been discussion about that? And, and where, where do you stand on that? Is that a possibility for uh, 2022? Well, the idea of a, a stadium show earlier in the call, someone asked me about future goals. Um, I think that would be a really big goal for me. And uh, it would, of course, I hope be a goal for AEW. I'm just speaking from my behalf to run an actual uh, stadium show, which to a degree we're doing with Arthur Ashe, uh, which is unreal. The tickets on Arthur Ashe in such a great uh, building. There's not a bad seat in the house. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're at the point now where, well, could we? And what would we put on? And um, and what would we call it? And all those all those things. Uh, I think it's something. You know, I can't say it's formally been discussed, but we're all thinking it. Um, I I I know of a few uh, places that I always thought would be great for a stadium show that haven't been touched on. Uh, again, this is just me. I am declaring this is just me saying it. But Miller Park uh, is a really unique venue that sits somewhere between a massive stadium show and a little bit more of an intimate vibe um that would be something i'm interested in but again um i can't speak for the whole company as far as where we're looking and what we have laid out uh in terms of those things but yeah it would be wonderful really would be wonderful to do a uh, a stadium show which we are doing with with arthur ash but to do a, to do another large one because those become destinations you know, all the, the shows that happen, the independent shows that, that join up with it, the cons uh, that become part of it. It almost feels like a natural extension of the original All In, which was such a Woodstock for wrestling, would be a big stadium show. Uh, no plans currently. Um, no plans uh, currently. But definitely, I, that's a personal goal for me. I think that'd be wonderful uh, to really show, my gosh, these crazy wrestlers are right about this revolution and the fans like it. Thanks. Thanks very much. Let's try Brian Joyce again from WrestleTalk. Brian, you there? Uh, 
I, I can hear something in the background, but he's not coming across. So that, Brian, might, be the, that might be the motorcycle in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brian, if you'd like to type in your question, um, Jim can answer, ask it that way. In the meantime, let's can can we go to uh, John Alba from Spectrum Sports? Um, hate to surprise John, but John was next in line. John, are you there? I'm always ready to roll, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, Cody, thank you for the time today. Uh, you you briefly touched on it before, but I'd like to know more about AEW's. Uh, current evaluation of vaccine status and mask wearing. The CDC made a recommendation last week that people running indoor venues, uh, people attending those kinds of events, uh, whether they're vaccinated or not, should be masking up. Uh, has AW taken an official stance on that? And is there any concern over how that may impact future events like All Out? Great question. The um we're always going to go off of uh, the state mandates. We're not going to try and uh, and break any rules or any laws. You know, the health and safety of our town, staff, and fans, it's the highest priority. You know, while there, there's not a mask mandate in the state of Florida for tomorrow's homecoming show, but we do encourage our fans to wear a mask if that's what would make them feel comfortable. Um, that's from the AW side of things. Uh, me personally, uh, again, declaring this personally, I would really hope that everyone out there just does their part with COVID and the variant to get themselves vaccinated. Um, you know, this illness affects old people. It affects young infants. And I think people should, this again, personally, should get vaccinated. If they're one of these wild people who thinks they're going to be filled with nano machines, well, the solid snake is going to save us anyways. So uh, that's a Metal Gear Solid reference. Hopefully some people get it. Izzy absolutely is not going to get it. Um, yes, uh, we're going off state mandates. So it's something that we're looking at and we monitor every day, every day. Uh, Mega sends the new COVID protocols, how it's looked globally, how it looks domestically, so that we can prepare. And we are prepared. You know, the pandemic came and that's why we're calling the show Homecoming because Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida became our home. The Nightmare Factory uh, was fitted to, to operate seven shows as well. Um, we'll be able to pivot. That's a, a strength in leadership in terms of Tony Khan and strength in the company in case we have to. Right now, uh, no plans to change. Uh, the main plan is to follow state guidelines. And if masks are state guidelines, absolutely. If vaccination proof is state guidelines, absolutely. Uh, we want fans to have fun and have fun safely. Thanks, Cody. Um, so for our final question of the day, we're going to try Brian again, Brian Joyce from Russell Talk. Um, and if we don't have Brian, we will wrap it. But Brian, hopefully you're there. Brian? You can't, Jim, you can't, you can't leave practice on a miss. Everyone knows that. We got to get another question. Yeah. All, right, right, well, there is a write-in. So how about if I take a write-in? And, and, and this is, this is a, a good write-in here. Um, so let's end it with a write-in from Sebastian Diaz from Over the Top Rope. Oh, I'm sorry, Over the Top Rope. Congratulations on the success of AEW over the past couple of weeks, which may have been the most important in the company history these past couple of weeks. How do you keep this momentum going and growing? You know, taking what's happened over the past couple of weeks and replicating it tomorrow, the following week, and the following week. Great question. And I think the answer there is what you see front and center. As much as it's the focus and the priority of the show, what's in the ring, what's very important to keeping the momentum happening is what is happening with the younger talent that's developing not in the ring at that moment, building new stars. That's something we hear in wrestling all the time, building new stars and how it wasn't possible and you can't do it. And I, I would completely disagree. Take a look at Darby Allen. Really, look at them. There are kids at every crowd. That's one thing I do at these shows. I count the shirts I see in the front row. Uh, I see the kids with the face paint on. That's huge to put their ha your hat on as a company is building your next golden circle. We know who the golden circle of the company is right now. Their faces are on all the billboards. They're all the action figures, all that thing. But that will change. And this is a company that will not make the mistakes where we hang on too long. 
when it's time to change, it's time to change. And developing young talent is crucial. That's why I love Dark and love Elevation so much, um, to see those challenges and, and things done right, mistakes made, all that good stuff. Yeah, developing new stars. That's it. That's the resource for wrestling is wrestlers. So we have to make more. Okay, we're going to end on that that note then. Thank you, Cody. Um, and Brian, we hope to get you back on the next time you do one of these. Um, to everybody on the line, uh, many thanks for, on behalf of Cody Rhodes and just everybody, Tony Khan and everybody at uh, All Elite Wrestling. Uh, per our custom, we're going to be distributing an audio recording here shortly. And uh, again, we thank you. We never take for granted your your uh, your interest and and uh, a real commitment to the industry and certainly uh, everything that AEW has to offer. So thank you very much for that. We're going to wrap it up and we'll see you next time we do this. Thank you guys. Thank you.